Welcome to this comprehensive guide on the settings found in the grid tab of the Victron VE Configure software. It is essential to correctly configure these settings of your V-Bus inverter charger, such as the Multi Plus or Quattro device, so that it works in sync with the grid, as well as the loads and appliances downstream from the inverter. Before continuing with this tutorial video, you'll need to first have Victron V configuration tools downloaded and installed on your Windows computer. From there, you will have to connect the Victron MK3 device between your inverter and computer using a spare USB port as well as a certified UTP cable. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check out my previous two videos in order to help you get this all done correctly before continuing with this video. With all that said and done, let's now take a deeper look at connecting to and using VE Configure. The grid tab of VE Configure is designed to manage how Victron inverter chargers integrate with and react to the electrical grid. This section encompasses a variety of settings critical for ensuring the system's compatibility with grid standards, optimizing performance, and safeguarding connected devices. The Country Grid Code Standard setting is an important feature for configuring Victron's inverter chargers to comply with local grid regulations. Different countries have specific legislation and requirements for grid interaction, including how the inverter detects and responds to the loss of the grid, acceptable voltage and frequency levels, as well as round times. By selecting the correct grid code, it is set up to adhere to these local regulations, ensuring safe and legal operation. I won't go much further into this setting as each country has its own unique grid requirements, which is outside the bounds of this tutorial video. To correctly comply, please refer to your national laws and regulations for more information. The next section deals with the transfer switch built into the inverter. The primary role of the transfer switch is to automatically switch the power source for connected loads. For example, if you have a setup where the inverter is connected to both a grid and a battery, the transfer switch can automatically switch the load from the grid to the battery in the event of a power outage, ensuring uninterrupted power supply. The Accept Wide Input Frequency Range setting adjusts the inverter charger's tolerance for variations in the AC input's frequency. Inverters typically need a consistent frequency to function properly, as fluctuations can cause operational challenges or even harm the system. When activated, this feature allows the inverter to operate with an input frequency that is broader than the standard narrow range, specifically from 45 to 65 Hz. This ensures compatibility with power sources that have less stable frequency outputs, such as some generators, without compromising the inverter charger's performance. This is beneficial in scenarios where the power source does not consistently maintain a standard frequency. For example, portable generators often experience frequency shifts as their engine speeds vary under different load conditions. This variability is more pronounced with conventional generators as opposed to inverter type models. If the Victron inverter charger is configured to only accept a narrow, standard frequency band, it might not accept power from a generator that oscillates around the ideal 50 Hz or 60 Hz frequency. In summary, this enhanced frequency tolerance is particularly advantageous in locations with erratic grid frequency or in conjunction with generators that lack frequency stability. It allows the inverter to remain connected to power sources, avoiding interruptions caused by minor frequency fluctuations, contributing to a more stable and consistent power supply. However, if you have a stable grid, then it's best to leave this off. Note that when the setting is disabled, the acceptable input frequency defaults to the system frequency value in the general tab, given a 5 Hz positive and negative leeway on each side. The AC voltage connection and disconnection settings dictate the voltage limits at which the Victron inverter charger will accept or reject the AC power supply. The AC low voltage disconnect setting determines the minimum voltage at which the inverter charger will continue to draw power from the AC source. If the input voltage drops below this threshold, it will disconnect from the AC source to protect your system from under voltage issues. Should a disconnection happen due to low voltage, then the AC low voltage connect setting specifies the voltage at which the inverter will reconnect to the AC source, ensuring the voltage has stabilized at an acceptable level. In a similar manner, the AC high voltage disconnect setting will disconnect the incoming grid if the AC input voltage rises above this upper limit. 
thereby preventing overvoltage damage to the system and the appliances linked to it. Lastly, the AC high voltage connect setting is the voltage at which the inverter will connect to the AC source after being disconnected due to a high voltage disconnect, confirming the voltage has returned to a safe operating level. For example, for configuring voltage disconnect and reconnect settings on a 230 volt electrical grid, a typical guideline involves setting thresholds at 10% lower and higher than that of the nominal voltage for disconnection limits while setting a narrower margin for reconnection thresholds in order to ensure stability and protect connected devices. To determine the AC low voltage disconnect, we need to calculate a limit that is 10% below the nominal voltage of 230 volts. To do this, we simply subtract 10% from 230 volts, which is 23. This results in a disconnect threshold of 207 volts. We then do the same for the high voltage disconnect by adding 10% or 23 volts to 230, which works out to be 253 volts. Reconnection voltages should be set within the nominal voltage and the disconnect limits that we just calculated. A reasonable approach is to use a midpoint value, which in this case is 5%. Therefore, to calculate the AC low voltage reconnect value, we would subtract 5% or 11.5 volts which works out to approximately 219 volts. We then do the same for the AC high voltage reconnect by simply adding 11.5 volts to 230, giving us a reconnect value of 242 volts. With these set, the Victron inverter will instantly disconnect should it reach either the low or high disconnect limits. If a disconnection occurs, the inverter will instantly transition to DC mode, supplying power from the batteries while using its internal 230 voltage supply, thereby providing the loads with a safe and stable voltage. The grid will need to sustain a voltage that is on or below the set reconnection threshold for a specified duration in order to confirm stability to the inverter before it re-engages with the grid supply. For enhanced protection of electronic devices that are typically rated up to a maximum of 240 volts, such as computers, TVs, gaming consoles and kitchen appliances, more conservative settings are advisable. In this case, one may opt for a narrower variance of 5% for both the low and high disconnect voltages. Thus, the low disconnect would be set at 230 volts, minus 5%, or 11.5 volts, resulting in 219 volts while the high disconnect would be set at 230 volts plus 5%, which works out to be 242 volts. This precaution ensures that the grid voltage does not exceed the tolerance levels of most household electronics, as the inverter will disconnect them from the incoming AC grid voltage before damage is done. Instead, it will supply battery power to the load at a stable 230 volts until the grid stabilizes, thereby safeguarding them from potential overvoltage damage. Subsequently, the reconnection values would be set closer to the nominal voltage, using a 2.5% margin. This translates to a low reconnect voltage of approximately 224 volts and a high reconnect voltage of approximately 236 volts. By employing these settings, one can achieve a balance between ensuring the protection of electronic devices and maintaining a stable and reliable power supply from the grid. In the event that the batteries are being charged while the grid reaches the low disconnect of 219 volts, the Victron inverter can reduce its charger output to a minimum in order to avoid further voltage drop on the AC source, which could be caused by the charger drawing too much current. This is a protective feature that helps maintain the stability of the input voltage and prevents unnecessary cycling of the connection and disconnection relays. These settings are particularly important for systems that might be connected to less stable power sources, such as portable generators or variable quality grid power. They ensure the inverter charger operates within safe voltage parameters, which is crucial for the longevity of the system and the safety of connected loads. When the UPS function is enabled, the Victron inverter charger acts similarly to an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS. It does this by becoming more critical of the incoming AC supply's waveform. So, if the waveform is distorted beyond acceptable parameters, which is often the case during power outages or with poor quality generators, the inverter will quickly switch to battery power to maintain a clean power supply to the connected loads. 
If you deselect the UPS function, the MultiPlus becomes less sensitive to waveform distortion, which means it can tolerate a lower quality AC supply without switching to battery power. Note that in previous software versions, deselecting this function activated a feature called Allow Inrush Currents, but now it will automatically enable Inrush without the need to additionally activate it. This Inrush Current feature is designed to prevent the MultiPlus from tripping its set lower voltage limit when heavy startup loads are encountered. This is particularly useful for starting heavy loads that require a significant amount of current at startup, such as motors or compressors. Therefore, if your priority is to protect sensitive electronics and ensure they are always supplied with a high-quality waveform, you would keep the UPS function selected. Conversely, if you are using a generator that produces a less stable waveform, or if you need to start heavy loads that cause inrush currents, you would deselect this function to allow the inverter to handle these situations without disconnecting from the AC supply. Note that when the UPS function is deselected, the AC load disconnect voltage value will be ignored for a short time when the load current is higher than 1.5 times the AC input current limit. This is to prevent unnecessary switching to the inverter due to a voltage drop when a high load is connected. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, I sincerely hope you have enjoyed the content and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe if you have, as well as to get notified of any future videos. Oh, and make sure to check out this video as well. You can also subscribe over here. And this one is pretty cool too. Lastly, don't forget to visit the Blue Power Pro Forum.